Yo, what's up, Marvin? Uh, I can't tell if I'm reluctant to make this video because I'm afraid of offending anybody or if because any discussion of sex is always um, autobiographical because you, well, sex is one of the things that you can't really know anything about for sure. Uh, except maybe about yourself. You can't say anything generally about sex. Like, yeah, there's two kinds of people. There's gay people and there's straight people. And there's other kinds of people. To say that is to project your own idea onto what is really billions of individuals' experience, which you can't really step into. But I think there is an interesting... Um, parallel here to what you were saying about how you have an inner self that is not your physical body and that can love another human being regardless of, of what sex they are because the sex is part of their physical manifestation and it's not their essential self. It's not who they are inside. It's not their thoughts. And I think that type of experience, the way that we all experience ourselves as having this internal monologue, which is who we are, and this other world out there, which is including our own bodies, which is sort of an accident. And we're always having to uh, correct for the mistakes that it makes, because it's always like attacking us in these uncomfortable ways, and we have to somehow assert ourselves and make the other respect us and uh, so we play that that game and not that it's a game it's it's you know Ian's an actor and you know when you go to acting school they teach you how to method act now which is really you, they just show you get into the situation which you're supposed to be playing and be a person be yourself and so that's how you act and that's how we always act though even when we're not on camera when we're with our friends we're performing a personality that's tailored to the situation and we know it we're all very self-conscious these days i mean it's it's part of the evolution of consciousness that forces people to become more and more aware of themselves and we've become so aware of ourselves and with the help of language sort of done this weird loop thing with our consciousness so that we can talk about ourselves as though we weren't what's happening out here. And that's the thing about sex. Sex is our connection to what's happening out here because it's so intense and pleasurable that it forces us to feel something. And even straight guys who, who don't have any emotions, like you're saying, uh, they feel when they have sex, and that's why they love sex so much. Because it's that release of emotion that you can't get anywhere else. Um, or that a straight man couldn't get anywhere else. But, you know, again, keep in mind, when I say anything about sex, I'm just talking about myself. Um, because how else could I say anything meaningful about sex? If it's a feeling, it has to be a feeling that comes from me. So I don't want to offend anybody, and I don't want anybody to think that the things that I'm saying somehow apply to everyone. I'm just talking about sex. And when you talk about sex, in the culture that we live in, it's, it's, uh, it's a volatile um, thing to do because you're offending so many other individuals because everyone asserts their right to be an individual. We, we first... We think that the first assertion of rights that we make is that uh, we have a right to happiness and the pursuit of property and our own um, self-interest. We all have, we command that respect from everyone, but we don't realize the first right that we have to declare is our right to be an individual and we need to be a separate entity from everything else. And I think what, I mean, sex connects us to the other. It's our, it's our connection to the past. 
the way DNA is passed on is through sex. And if you don't have sex, I mean, sex is uh, one of the mo more um, prominent aspects of the evolutionary force that's that's gotten us to where we are today. Female selection and, and uh, male prowess working somehow together in this strange communion where the man doesn't know the woman and the woman doesn't know the man and yet somehow they do what they're supposed to do and evolution evolution progresses or you know but does it progress i think that's what a lot of people are realizing now and that's why ian crossland will say things like if everybody became gay civilization would be in chaos because what he's really expressing there is that we have this preconceived notion of what evolution is, that it's this, prog it's this progression through time where man and woman, self and other, um, are dancing with each other and competing with each other. And um, if the man and the woman are together, not only can we not uh, progress, but we can't even reproduce. And so what's changing the whole idea of what it means to be alive, no longer is the meaning of life to pass on your genes, your body, all of a sudden the meaning of life is more spiritual. It's more of a mental thing. It's about you up here inside, your soul. And I think it's interesting, Marvin, and I think you're obviously an atheist, and yet you still have a belief in the soul, even though it's a belief that you, th you have very intense experiences to um, confirm I think when you really look at those experiences and your thoughts, they're really a reflection of um, the people that you encounter on a day-to-day -day basis and the, and the books that you've read and um, the ideas that you've created about what other people are like, all based on your experience of other people. And you use all that information about others to form your own self-concept as well. You don't know yourself, but through those you have communicated with. 